All right, the first thing that you should do is installing the tools that you need. You should install VS Code Bicep extension and uh, as you see a lie, the latest version would be better, a version that is greater than 2.2. And after that, you can install Bicep using this AV Bicep install. I believe you have already done this setup, so let's get started. And here I have the most simple bicep file. This will deploy only one resource and that resource is going to be a storage account as you can see here. And now let's understand the structure of this file. As you can see, I'm defining a resource. This is a keyword in bicep and I'm giving a symbolic name for the resource that I'm creating and I'm calling it a storage account. I can call it so, something like storage account one, two, three as well. And I'm defining the resource type here. And this has two things as you can see. This is the, the type of resource that I'm creating and this is the API version. Um, and after that, I am setting the properties of this resource. The name is storage and location is Southeast Asia and the SKU is going to be locally redundant and storage v2 and access tier is hot. So let's deploy this one and get an understanding on how it all works. So here I have prepared a script, a PowerShell script that will first create a resource group in Azure and then it will deploy the script that I have created here. So let's just try to do this and see how it works. So I'm going to copy this code here and paste it in my PowerShell and I have deployed my resource group. Let's just try to do this as well. Now let me open up my Azure portal here and refresh. Yeah, as you can see, I have the resource group and you can see I have deployed the storage account. Now let me switch back to my Visual Studio and let's understand variables on bicep. Now let's say I want to reuse this storage name. What I can do is I can just cut it and paste it here right like this and I can make it a variable. Let's call it storage name and this is equal to that and let's try to put it here. Now we have used a variable to store the storage name. And also you can do string interpolations as well. Let's say you have a prefix that you want all your resources to have. You can add the prefix like this. I'm going to call it mine prod for example and uh, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add and interpolate this prefix um, to my storage account name. So let's add that. As you can see I have done that. Let's try to deploy this one again. All right that's done. Let me open up my Azure portal and refresh it. Yeah, as you can see, I have created this storage account and it has prod as a prefix. Now let me go back to my VS code and these variables, these things, they don't have to be just values like this. They can be arrays as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, define an array. I'm going to call it regions. Let's um, and uh, let's put few regions here. As you can see, it looks like JavaScript arrays, but it doesn't have a comma. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to loop through these items in my array and I'm going to create multiple storage account in these regions. Now let me show you the syntax for loops in Bicep. The first thing that you should do when you start with a loop is um, add these square brackets and then you can start to write the loop. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through all these items here. Let me call it region, the item in this array and uh, and I'm going to add in and regions. I'm going to reference this variable here. Now let me add a colon here to complete this loop. I still see an error and that is because I haven't referenced this region um, parameter here in my object anywhere. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this and paste here in location replacing Southeast Asia that I already have and that should fix it. Now if I deploy this one there will be three storage accounts but there's one issue and that is I have only one name specified and we can't we can't have multiple and we can't have multiple storage accounts with the same name. So for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an index from this loop. So for that I can just uh, apply syntax like this and get um, an index and then I'm going to append that index to my storage name and for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to use string interpolation I can just append the i 
All right, now let's try to deploy this and see what happens. As you can see, the deployment is a success now. Let me go to my Azure portal and yeah, as you can see, I have three storage accounts and they are in three regions as well. So let me switch to summary view. Yeah, as you can see, um, this is my better representation of it. Awesome. And let me show you now how functions work in Bicep. Now let me clear this um, loop and go back to the code that I had before. Let's say I want to deploy um, to this region that is the East US and this is the first item in this array. And for that what you can do is you can use a few inbuilt functions. Let's say, yeah, I'm going to use this first uh, function. I'm going to pass in this reference here like this you can use functions there are a lot of functions that you can use in bicep let me show you if you go here this i will link below uh, and there are many functions you can concatenate strings and you can uh, see whether something contains and uh, there's a lot of things that you can do like this now let me go back to my visual studio code and you understand now what functions are and uh, the use of it as well now let's understand the if conditions in bicep and before that let me do a little bit of cleanup in the file that you're working on so let me change the name um, to today's date like this now let's say based on this prefix here that we have defined you need to change the, uh, the deployments so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this name um, like this and I'm going to create a copy of it and I will change the name as well let's call it dev all right now to add a conditional deployment so what you should do is you should add this if condition like this and I'm going to copy this and paste the same here I'm going to change this to dev so let's now and also I don't want this region Let's, uh, let's go into the last region in the array when I do a dev deployment. So let's change this to dev as well. Now let me run this and see what happens. All right, the deployment is done. Let me go to my Azure portal and go to list view and see what happens. As you can see, I have dev here and it's deployed in node theorem. So the condition worked. All right, I have just cleaned up the bicep file now we have the simpler setup that we had initially the next three things that you're going to understand is modules parameters and outputs you can think of a module in bicep as another bicep file so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create a module i'm going to create a new file let's call it storage dot bicep and i'm going to copy this script and i'm going to paste it here in the storage file now we have successfully created a bicep module this is enough you can invoke it um, from this script file if you want but let me make it a little bit more interesting what I can do is I can just introduce a parameter a basically a input for this module so what I can do is I can just um, define a parameter here so these are the inputs for this module so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add storage name like this and it's going to be a string and I can add constraints like min length and uh, max length now I'm going to copy this and paste it here so that this will be my storage name in this module so these are the inputs to the module so the next thing that I'm going to show you is the outputs from this module so what you can do is you can just add this output keyword this is going to be a object type and this will be equal to storage account one and properties and primary endpoints so I have created this module successfully now let's go back to script.bicep and clear this up and for consuming modules what you can do is you can just use this keyword module and I'm gonna call it storage module and the name is as you can see storage.bicep and it is getting the name from this file right as you can see I can name this module um, let's call it storage module as well and since I have deployed a parameter here I can pass it from here I can just uh, use the name that I have added there and that is storage name like this I'm gonna call it um, 
awesome so let me save it and let's deploy this and see what happens now as you can see I'm getting an error and that is because I have added this max length parameter here I don't want it to validate for now let me remove it and let's try again all right the deployment is now done let me go to my resource group and let's refresh it as you can see I have deployed this storage account from a module the next step that we're going to learn is the concept of scopes in bicep now let me open up bicep official documentation and go into this scope section as you can see there are four types of scopes in bicep not in bicep in azure in general so if you go here into resource group section you can specify like this target scope is equal to resource group and also this is the default scope and that's why we haven't specified this in the bicep files that we've been working on and this setting here tells bicep the types of resource that we are planning to include in the bicep file that you're going to write as you can see it could be resource group subscription management group or tenant what i'm going to do now is i'm going to specify subscription level scope and then i'm going to deploy a resource group and a storage account inside of that resource group so let's get started now let me switch back to my vs code and specify the target scope you can do it with this command right here and as you can see these are the options that are available for you so i'm going to select this subscription level and what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to create a resource group in this subscription and for that I need a name so I'm going to specify this variable here I'm going to call it rg name and I'm going to call it um, deployed from bicep uh, resource group and then I'm going to specify the resource group I'm going to name this my new group and the the resource type will be resource group as you can see and then the api version i'm going to go with this one and i can specify the name of the resource group since i have specified that here i can just reference that and the location is still going to be southeast asia like this and i should remove this comma as well because that's not valid in bicep and i have declared this resource group like this as you can see i'm getting this error here and let's see what that is this scope subscription is not valid for this module like as i said before uh, we are when we are setting this target scope here we are telling bicep how the types of resources that we are planning to include in our bicep file so what i'm going to do now is specify the scope you can specify it like this with scope parameter and I'm going to then since this is a resource group I'm going to use this function the name of the resource group I'm going to get it from this symbolic uh, variable here as you can see the error is gone now let's try to deploy this so I'm going to deploy this with this command it's daisy deployment sub create and this is the subscription ID and I'm specifying the template file here so let's try to deploy this now as you can see the deployment is done let me go to my azure portal and as you can see here we have the resource group that we have deployed and inside of that resource group we have the storage account today we have learned how to use the cli and the resources and the conditional deployments variables and parameters and modules and uh, functions as well and finally we learned scopes as well now let me tell you the next steps that you can take when it comes to learning bicep here if you go to the best practices page in the official documentation for bicep you will find a lot of best practices that you can um, learn when it comes to parameters and variables and naming conventions and uh, resource definitions as well and if you want to learn more there's this microsoft learn module as well i will link this down below and this concludes this video hope you learned some cool stuff today and if you have any questions or comments you can leave down below and if you want to be updated with what I'm doing, you can subscribe to my channel as well. And thanks for watching.